Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Planescape Torment. In the last episode, we, uh, finally managed to catch the person who was running around in the square and found out that her name was Ingress, and she's kind of been trapped in Sigil for 30 years. And we're basically trying to find a planeswalker to help her out. We also became a full-fledged mage, learning stuff like Identify, a uh, Bridge of Blood, and Chromatic Orb. So, who knows, maybe some dumb Burke will try to it, and will try to attack us, and we'll get to test out our new magic on them. But for now, uh, apparently you guys told me that I was right to look in the Smoldering Corpse Bar, but Ebb Creek Knees wasn't the dude we were looking for. We were actually looking for this guy, Candrian. You see a soft-looking man with a gen with gentle, far-staring eyes. He dresses in supple leather clothing and carries various implements of use and destruction around his body, such as ropes, spikes, tinder boxes, and empty vials of air. He looks half gone, literally. There is an in insta insubstantiality to ex to his existence as if his essence has been partially leached away. He focuses his eyes on you, and you suddenly find them gripping and determined. Greetings to you, O Seeker. Hi. He carefully sets down the mug he's holding and gives you all his attention. I have seen the far reaches of the multiverse and returned to tell the tale. I have walked upon the bodies and dead gods and... Upon the moonbeams and the astral ahead of a thousand shrieking Githyanki nights, I have passed the edges of existence and watched my essence shiver away before me. What is it that I can do for you? I have some questions for you. Let's see. Well, I met a woman named Ingress, woman with very bad teeth. She said she had to come she had come through a portal from some world that was opened by a tomb hummed near two crossed trees. Can you get her home? He pauses briefly, thinking. I know the portal of which you speak, though I have not traveled it in the in these thirty years gone. I will take her home, seeker. Go tell her to await my arrival, and then meet me back here. I will tell you if I was successful or not. Thank you. Oh, well, Candrian. Updated my journal. All right, let's go tell Ingress the good news then. Oh, uh oh. No, you guys will never learn your lesson, will you? Get out of here. Right. Oh shit. Get out of here. There we go. More drink for us. Also, I realized, uh, while I was in the mortuary after we got our asses beat, I probably should have picked up that weapon I was... Are we still being chased? Well, not like it matters anymore. Uh, let's see. So, Ingress should usually- oh no, wait, not quite up here. She's usually up over here, I think. I mean, that's where we, land that's where we ran into her last time. Ingress, where are you at? Yeah, I found help. I fug. Hey, there she is. You see Ingress, she is huddled inside her cloak of dirty rags, her teeth chattering, glancing and she she is glancing fervidly around her, as if expecting to be attacked at any moment. Hi, Ingress. It you she squints at you. What is it you want me now? You wanna see me leave? Not leave in this city, yet, so I'm not I can't try not a city. It's a prison to everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you to your home plane. Ingress falls silent. I... I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Candrian. He should be along shortly to help you. Trust him, alright? Ingress says nothing. He merely nods quietly, her teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back and meet Candrian at the smoldering corpse bar and I'll make sure everything turned out. 
Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. Oh, I hope this poor girl can... Did she just run off again? God damn it. I hopefully she'll just, like, stay in that place. Like, running around in circles, maybe. Jacked up on whatever hyped up planes caffeine she's on. Also, uh, something that my boyfriend mentioned to me, uh, when it comes to, uh, special terms in this world known as planar cant, turns out spireward doesn't mean north. It just means towards the spire in the center of the city, and I have no idea where that is. Either way, let's go talk to Candrian and see how that went. Hey, buddy. Candrian stands as you approach him. The tooth woman wanted you to have these, he says, holding ah, holding out his hand. He wa she wanted to express her thanks, even out of the balance, and then even out of in, even out of the balance book, as it were, and be done with these damned things. In his palm, in the palm of his hand, are Ingress's dancing teeth, and he smoothly deposits them into your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. Uh, one thing he also mentioned is never turn down an opportunity to learn about the nature of the plane, so... What are you doing? I... I am fresh and back from negation. I am trying to restore my essence before it slips away from me altogether. What do you mean? His eyes cloud over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. I made the mistake of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to, de to decay and the cycle of death and life. I thought myself protected against the ill effects of the plane with my magic, but I was wrong. The blackness of infinite nothing pressed on my soul, and I was beset by shadows that sought, that sought to snuff out my very soul. I lost my way for a time, for an eternity, and nearly lost my existence. I could never feel, I could feel my essence falling away from me, and even now I am half gone. Never will I return. How did you survive? Updated my journal. Because, I mean, you basically went to limbo from the sounds of it. How did I survive? He smiles slightly. With a piece of nothing that held the bed held back the nothing. Nothing can stop nothing, you know. And so I carried nothing in my hand to protect me. Do you plan to journey to the ultimate negation yourself? You have the smell of desperation about you. And so I make you this gift. Hold it in your hand when the shadows press in, and it should protect you and your friends somewhat, should they remain close to you. <laughs> he passes you a small black token that looks like it has no dimension dimensionality at all. Thank you. I'll make sure to keep it safe. Tell me more of the planes, please. You would know more of the planes? Ask, and I shall tell as best I can. Would you like? Would you hear of the outer planes, the prime material, or the inner planes? Uh, tell me of the outer planes. We'll work our way inwards. Now, the outer planes. Where should I start? Do you know the cardinal rules of the planes on which one, which all others are based? Do you know about the composition of the outer planes? Do you know the great ring and the divisions in our in our hearts? Do you know of the individual planes? Each of these leads to the next, and so it is best to start from the beginning. Alright, tell me about the composition of the planes. The outer planes are created of and by belief and thought and faith. They take their imagined form from the prime material plane shaped into the forms that stagger, that stagger the imagination, built by the accumulation of belief. Belief creates the planes. Belief is power here. Change belief, and you change the nature of reality. The creatures that are born here, the plane-born, like, like the fiends and the celestials, are truly born, and then are truly born of the thoughts and concepts of mortals. They each express some sort of ideal. And the more powerful the ideal, the more powerful the being. Thus, the being that symbolizes love is one of the strongest of all. Go on, 
please. That's why the powers, gods some call them, live out here. This is where the all where this is where all the faith in them comes. This is where they're in they are at their most true their most pure and most strong. Their realms are extensions of their very beings, manifestations of their godly essence. All of it is informed by belief. So the composition of the planes is belief? Tell me of the great ring now. Among the loose unity unity of plane walkers, we conceive the in we conceive of the infinite outer planes as a ring of the surround as a ring surrounding the plane of ultimate neutrality, the outlands. The spire atop which Sigil sits is the center of the outlands. The further one travels away from the spire, the less neutral the, pl the plane grows until it spills onto the neighboring planes. Each of these planes in spin in Pinches on the outlands, spinning themselves into, um, into law and chaos, good and evil. The great mo, uh, the great road, marks the demarcation between the outlands and the in and the gate towns that spring up around the gates of, the, of these plains. Beyond the gate towns lies the hinterlands, uncharted territory that is lost to history, that lo um, that loses thought. Danger lies in the hinterlands. On. The outer planes differ by morality, not substance. For you, we'll divide the planes into, th into three sets. The upper planes of good, the lower planes of evil, and the boundary planes of neutrality. These are the divided and these are divided further by law and chaos, with the outlands in the in the middle. Which of these interests you? Hmm. Tell me about the lower planes. Like the upper planes, the lower planes are divided into lawful, chaotic, and neutral. Each of them varies in terms and non in terms of horrors and what those horrors didn't do to a traveler's spirit, and all of them are best avoided. Which the, which of them would you like to hear of? Uh hmm. I've never really understood the concept of lawful evil, so let's hear about that. As much as I detest the order of the lawful upper planes, at least they present a mind a modicum of goodness. Their lower planar counterparts, though, Acheron's a place of ren of ricocheting cl and cub and cubes that never see the end of battle, swarming with all the souls of dead humanoids. Battle. He shivers involuntarily. Bator is a place best avoided. Those Batizu, the fiends in the corner there, are but men are the mere are but the merest expression of the deviant corruption embodied in that soulish machine of, or of order. If you want more, talk to them. But remember, all and all and all that is bad about bureaucracy and order originates from Bator. It spreads like a stain across the hearts of mortals. Though there is some knowledge to be found there, it is rarely worth the spiritual rape the plane inflicts. Oh god. Spiritual rape, that's a new one. Is it really that bad? Alright, tell me about the rest of the lower planes then. Tell me about the neutral planes then. Neutral planes, eh? They're vile and barely understandable, and they're more insidious than in, on their own than you could ever imagine. Take Gehenna, for example. Four volcanoes in, sta in stages of dormancy, floating in the infinite void, yet each of them somehow alive, and each of them wanting your soul by whatever means they can get it. Populate and populate it with you with you goths, the worst kinds of fiends in my opinion, and you've got the place. The point the plane of ultimate evil, at least that's what they call it, is the grey waste. And in a no place that drains the colour from your body and spirit, stealing away even your apathy. 
and it's the site of the worst battlegrounds in the, in the war down there. Don't get me started. Then you've got Carceri on the chaotic side. Tell me about the war. Aye, the blood war. At the name, your blood feels as if it freezes in your veins. Illborn doesn't seem and illborn doesn't seem to notice, wrapped up in his men, wrapped up as, as he is in his memories. Two armies of fiends smashing against each other pointlessly across the lower plains, slaughtering mindlessly in the name of law and chaos. The aggra they aggrandize it, of course, but in the end, it's about hate and stupid endeavor that aids none and harms far too many. Hmm. Alright. Tell me about Carceri, then. Ah, <sighs> Carceri and its poisonous jungles, acid swamps, destructive waters, strung like a string of rotten pearls nestled within one another. He pauses and looks at you carefully, again, fixing you in a pla fixing you in place with his eyes. Remember this, Seeker. Carceri is a prison. Home to the Gehariths? One of the most dangerous types of fiends there is. The strength of the prison is the strength of the captor. As strong as the prisoner lets it be. Destroy the prison keeper, and a body can escape the red prison. There is almost no other way out. When the, not when the gates close in themselves against you and watch you spin off into the vast space surrounding it, the orbs. Be wary of Carceria, Traveler, for its bonds can be greater than flesh. Alright, tell me about the rest of the Updated lower plains. Journal. Oh, we got a journal update out of that. Well, there's only one plane we haven't learned about yet. The abyss isn't some place you should consider going. Or Bator's all in all order in all orderly. The, the abyss is full of chaos and change, and none of it is pleasant. When it comes to something that approximates normality, that's when you should be the most wary of it. It's the home of the Tanari, what most primes call demons, and they've got some and they've got that name for a reason. They're unpredictable and murderous, and the few you can trust are few and far between. The few I've met and who I trust, I still don't trust entirely. They are creatures of chaos and evil incarnate. And even if they pull in the, even if they're putting on a friendly face, who's to say that it's not part of a larger agenda? Tell me more of the plans of the Great Rain. Alright, let's learn about the upper plans now. Alright, uh, tell me about the Chaotic Plains. These are where I feel at home, though I'd steer clear of Yskard for the most part. The endless battles and tests of metal among the floating earthbergs of the plain don't do much for my disposition. Arborea, though, he sighs. The mountains are taller, the air is clearer, the river is purer. It's again and the game larger than anywhere else. It is a true paradise, a place where passions run high and the wine never ceases to flow. When I have recovered enough of my wits of myself, when we are, when we are when we ha when we have done when we have done with the outer plains, you should ask me of the inner and I will describe of my journey to you. I will return to Aborea's bowers and glades and lose myself for a time. Tell me about the rest of the upper plains. Man, for chaotic, like for chaotic upper plains, that actually sounds really like a really nice place to visit. But uh, tell me of the lawful plains, please. Candrian gives a small shudder. I am not the best person to speak of the plains of law, he says. For the innate structure and ultimate patterns, then they and they impose frighten me. I steer clear of them, because I value my individuality more than I value the knowledge they'll bring me. They include regiment they include regimented Arcadia, nearest to the good plains to the unbending order of Mechanus, and Mount Celestia, home of in home of the Akrons, an island an island in the Silver Sea. 
Alright, tell me about the rest of the upper planes. And finally, there are the neutral planes. The neutral upper planes contain the be contain the beast lands, a place of neutrality and goodness, with a slight tinge of chaos, where the animals rule in the eternal noon and night. They hold Bytopia, twin paradise of industry and labor, where all work and where all work towards the good of all. And Elysium, the sweetest plane of goodness and calm I have ever come across. Alas, right now I am not well enough to enjoy any of their restorative effects. What would you like to hear of now? Uh, we already lost. Let's see. Uh, tell me more of the planes of the Great Ring. Let's see. Tell me of the Boundary Planes next, I guess. There are two Boundary Planes in my mind. They are diamet. They are diametrically opposed. One of them, Mechanist. The very essence of law, a plane where beliefs fit together, interlocking, turning, in a massive machine that is in, that is the entire plane. Some folks have it and have it that the gears of mechanists are the engine that drives the planes. The other plane is limbo, a swirling morass of chaos that follows no rules, none, and just when a body thinks he's classified his behavior, it goes and changes on him, or it doesn't. You just can't tell. I was in Limbo not too long ago. That's where Dakon's people live, right? Tell me of your journey. He closes his eyes, remembering. I had a Githers I guide with me, an anarch who could shape the illogical matter of the plane into the forms of his desire. We had fought off the harrying of the Slatty, the chaos creatures who call that plane home. It seemed, the, it seemed there were more than usual, but then no one can ever tell what usual is in Limbo. But I digress. In the midst of all the chaos, we came across a series of huge metal interlocking cubes, like some sort of puzzle box. It wasn't something we had shaped, consciously or not, and we couldn't find a way inside. It was like, like a bastion of order within the confines of disorder, a seed of law. That's the best I can explain it. Updated my journal. Tell me more of... Oh. Okay, that's all we can learn. Okay, tell me about the Outlands. There we go. The Outlands are absolute neutrality. Possibly the be probably the best place for a body to visit in the outer planes, outside of Sybil. If you don't want to have a plane's mortality and morality focused into your heart, everything balances out in the outlands, as it should be. For the plane then for them for in and for the plane that sits at the center of the outer planes, powers realms are scattered about here, and there are handfuls of gate towns that open up into the rest of the outer planes. Gate towns are usually men usually mirror the philosophy of the plane of their gate that their gates open into. And the balance of belief isn't kept in the town. The town slips in then into a, the nearby plane. It's a bad situation for everyone, because few of the folk in the towns easily want that to change, but enough then but enough of the outlands. What more do and what more would you know? Uh, I think that's all I really, yeah, I think that's all I'd like to know. Thank you. I think I, I feel like I've learned a lot today. Alright, so let's leave the bar real quick and check our journal. Specifically, our quests. Okay. We're mostly down to just needing to find Farad, and honestly, I've heard a bunch of bad, bad shit about Black Rose. So tell you what, we're gonna go back to, uh, our Tomb Sweet Tomb, take a little nappy new there, and, uh, we'll probably, basically, uh, we'll go looking for Farad once it's actually bright enough to see shit.
First of all, can... In enduring, grow strong. Okay, so... Do we teach him more of his spells? No? That's something that we cannot do? Okay. In that case, let's get everybody selected again. And... Let's nap. That is still like the coolest loading screen I have ever seen. Oh right, we do have... He's, uh, teeth. Now, doesn't Mort wield teeth? Yes, yes he does. So, let's see. We cannot equip these teeth. The Mort, the Mort, but first. One to six crushing. Usable only by Mort. Can we not? One to three piercing. Proficiency fists. Don't ask. Okay, let's see. It's like to use, and the teeth may gain new options and abilities. This, this is Anvil of Ingress's living teeth. Apparently, they didn't want to go with her back to the portal near her home plane. They rattle amongst themselves whenever you ho whenever they are held close together. They remind you of a bunch of creepy ivory hopping bugs. Note, to change the teeth to a different type, select Use. The teeth may gain new options and abilities as Mort goes up in levels. Alright, Mort. Here we go. Come on. There we go. So, we can basically change it to anything that it calls for, so that's neat. I think we'll stick with crushing damage for now, though. It's still dark out, and that guy has his eye on us. So, I'm just gonna, like, see if I can't run up here, and see if he won't change his mind. If he does, great! If not, then, well, it's, it's his funeral, basically. Uh, where am I going? Right, I'm going over here. Following us? Yeah? No? No. Okay, Rag Picker's Square should be up here. I was hoping it would get brighter as I was out here, but I, I guess not. Regardless, everything seems to be pointing towards this place, the trash warrens. So, let's see. If we can't go there, can we not? Can we not go there? Can we not go to the trash warrens? Uh, let's see if we can't like get up on this bridge first. Okay. Right. Well, we can't go that way, so I guess we'll go this way? Whoa. So our Quentin's archway leads only inches into the small building before coming to and blocked by a swallowed wall of refuge. The rubbish is packed so tightly, it may as well be stones and mortar. Well... But, what, oh, wait, who, what, what, what is it, Mort? Hold up, Chief, look at this. Peering down, you notice a number of dirty footprints that lead into the archway. You do not turn around, and they do, and do not turn around. There must be a portal through here or something. Alright, how do we open it? I'm on the slightest, Chief. Maybe in it's gotta be a common key though. Look at all the traffic that's gone here and that's gone it's, that's gone through. Maybe one of the low lives around here would know. Oh boy, time to do some bribing. Right. Hope it wasn't that yellow finger, but oh oh I'm sorry, Dakon, did we leave you behind? Oh jeez, I'm sorry. 
Okay. So, uh, well, Nod might know, but at the same time, he did kind of, like, not want to share that information with, he didn't really want to talk about Farad. So let's talk to this collector. Hi. I have some questions. Okay. Go for a man named Farad. Uh, maybe he'll, like, loosen up if we give him, like, ten coppers? Let's see, I'm looking for a man named Farad. Farad, what about him? You seem suddenly wary. Why is that? Farad. <laughs> He spits, sneering contemptuously. Rag pickers square as share graves, me boss's territory. You see, Fraud and his dogs came in a while back and tried to oust us. We fought them off, we did. And so they're all hiding somewhere now. We can still catch one of his lads now and then running around the square. Usually we turn them and then we turn them into a quick spot and gin jink at the mortuary. Pike and sods. Do you know where Fraud is? I know where the rat bastard isn't. He ain't where most of the collectors call Kip in Ragpicker Square. But that he's close by here, and this isn't somewhere to chant. Hmm. Well, shit. Uh, well, didn't Sharegraves. Yeah, Sharegraves Kip is here. Maybe the Sharegrave guy knows, uh, you know. Maybe he knows how to get into Farad's place. Are you sure, Grave? Hi. Tall and lanky, this pale, grim-looking man exudes authority, despite his gangly and somewhat awkward frame. A good portion of his left ear is missing, and what's little that's left is a ragged mess of scar tissue, as if the ear was bitten off rather than cut. His narrow, shifting eyes, although mere slits, Look clever and dangerous. Hi there. We share a mutual hatred for somebody. He spits out a reply. I don't know you, Burke. He glares at you. What do you want? Answer quick before I call some men to make quick work of you. I just had some questions. He's quiet for a moment. Is that so? Like what? I'm looking for a man named Farad. The tension in the room suddenly rises. Now, what a funny thing to be asking about. What do you want to know about old Blood Farad for? He stole something from me, and I want it back. The man is silent for a moment, then cracks a smile. He steals from us all, doesn't he? Whether we're living or dead. What do you mean? Our main source of living around here is the dead. You follow? You're a collector. Aye, that's right. He looks at you as if he's considering something. Now, there's only so many debtors at any one time. My bloods and I can only gather so many. If somebody else is gathering debtors, that's much less a jig that goes into our pockets. Fraud's taking bodies, too? Aye. Updated so... my journal. The rub is that he's found a mother load of them. Now, I haven't heard of any massacres in civil. He frowns, tapping his chin. So I'm quite interested in knowing where all the debtors are coming from. I can find that out for you if you'd like. Oh, I? And how would you do that? All I need is find. All I need to do is find him. Let me worry about the rest. Updated my journal. Hmm. <laughs> You got it. I'll even give you 100 copper commons for your troubles. Go up to the platforms and follow them north and west. You'll come to a gate that leads to Farad's bolt hole. Getting in and getting in the information is your deal. And if anyone asks, you don't know me. And we never had this talk, here? Of course. But, uh, wait. I, w I wonder if we'll, like, tell us if we ask him who he is. For a smart cutter, you don't listen too well. Uh... Well, 
I mean, as I guess as long as he ain't calling guards, but, uh, shit. So, friggin, well, Rod doesn't, and, uh, Sharegrave doesn't know shit. Uh, can we not? Okay, there we go. Uh, well, hmm. Maybe this collector knows? Hi. I have some questions. Looking for a man named Farad. Here's ten copper commons. I'm looking for a man named Farad. Do you know where he is? Ugh, damn. Nobody fucking knows where this dude is. Hmm, well... Nod seems to be, like, straight up afraid of fraud, so I don't think he would know. Maybe Anna might know? She seems to, like... She seemed to, like, confidently tell us where he is, so... Unless... I want to see Lim Lim's. I... Are they... Oh no. Oh no, these Lim Lim's are dead! That's not cool! Eh. That makes me sad. But anyway, let's see. Where's Anna again? I'm gone. Here we go. She's usually like around like whatever the hell this thing is. Oh, I swear. I swear. You start. Done. You gonna start something? Damn. I feel stronger. Hey, we leveled up. Nice. First, we will level up after we kill this bastard. Oh my god, stop missing. There we go. Hey, Mort leveled up too. Nice. Oh, stuff it, Anna. Everybody move over. That way, I can take the drink. And then we can level up. Oh, wrong button. Level up. See, fighting skills have improved, spell memorization abilities have increased. Except, still no new points to allocate. Did I, am I doing something wrong? Do I only get them like every few, uh, every few levels, or? <laughs> Alright, let's level up for more real quick. Fighting skills have improved. Okay. Seriously though, like if I'm doing something wrong when it comes to allocating skills, don't be afraid to like tell me. Like I said, I'm still relatively new to these kinds of RPGs. Anyway. I'm gone. And. Uh, what is it? Let's see. Oddly enough, south and west of the mortuary is an alley filled with heavily armed thugs. No, anything? No, that's not what I'm looking for. You said fraud was to the south and west of the mortuary, correct? Correct. Aye, she studied you. I did. Have you forgotten already? No, but I was wondering if you had. You see, the army south in the mortuary is an alley full of heavily armed thugs. Know anything about that? Oh, she misled us. Wait, then why did I... Then again, I do get directions mixed up really easily. I'm really bad about that. But still, what the fuck? You bitch! Oh, I? Well, maybe you'd best be asking them where old stutter crutch is.
Oh, do I really have to threaten her? Enough of your lies. Tell me where Farad is, girl, or you'll soon number amongst the city's dead. By that, I'll have nothing more to say to you, Berg. Get it! You better watch your tongue, girl, or it's coming off. You better remember that if we speak again. I pike off to wherever you came from, then. Or will you too? So, Anna's not like gonna tell us. Ugh, damn it. Hell, she just like straight up led us to her death. What a bitch! I guess that means like somebody in here will have like some idea of how to get into Farad's portal. Let's see, I mean, maybe Crystal knows? Oh, for fuck's sake, who's attacking me? Who's attacking me? Who's doing it? Who's making a terrible mistake? Nobody? Nobody. Okay. Done. That's what I thought. Hey. Who? What? Just like I heard, like, somebody attacking something, but... Alright, whatever. Uh, well... Where's... This was like right there. There we go. Uh, not yet. Oh shit. I guess we do have to go. We have to go kill Black Rose. Who the fuck he is? I think there's something over here. Oh, there's I'm something going. here. Looks like some poor bastard died. Is there anything around here? No? Nothing. Wait, oh. Oh. That's Black Rose. That's the person we heard dying. Oh god. The man- oh. Shit. My mouse slipped. Man moves with a frightening speed, and he seems only half there. His eyes burnt out of his haze, and their madness pierces your heart. You, he says in a voice like a blast of cold air, declare your allegiance. Do you hold for good or evil? Hmm. I believe in aiding those less fortunate to myself. I choose good. There's a man named Rotten William. William. He is dark and he is a dark and deceitful man. He is the goon leader of the art of the dark alley shivs. Find him in his alley and slay him. You will serve the cause of goodness. Fail and I run out and I will freeze and fail. Okay, he's already dead. Your next task is to save Slay Crystal, leader of the Razor Angels. Balance and the balance requires her death. Uh, I mean, Crystal's already done so much for us. Uh, no. Oh shit! Oh, oh God! Oh god, that was a bad idea. Holy shit. Oh my god, that was a fuck terrible idea. Anyway, while we're down here, I'd like to... Oh, no, 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 I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Bye. I'm I have places to be. I need to go get a weapon from this place, because I, uh, I left it here. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. I left it here because I am forgetful. I have to keep a journal, you see. I'm so I'm just gonna sneaky deek over here. Get this back. Yeah. Good old. Oh. Usable by fighters only. 
Uh, on Oh, he can't use it either. You just hold on to that for me then, buddy. Okay, okay. Let's skedaddle. Don't mind me. Just leaving and making lots of mistakes. Hi, Dustman. As you can see, I've just left. And, uh, yeah, don't you worry about that. Okay, I basically racked my brain for the longest time, and I couldn't find out who else, like, we could talk to that knows where, for, like, how to get to Farad. So I ended up having to ask my friend Charlotte for a hint. And she basically just said, uh, there's this guy. His name is Angyar, and he might be able to help you out. I know I'm a pansy that gives up too easy, but it's 4 a.m. Alright, let's go in here and, uh. Wife of Angyar. Where is. Where is Angyar? Wait, there is Angyar. Hello. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half lidded as if he has trouble sleeping, and he has hair as long and, and, his, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is fucked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Hi. The man glances up at, in at the sound of your voice, and his slack expression vanishes. It looks like someone has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barging into me house? His eyes narrow, and his teeth clench. Get, or I'll send you back to whatever grave you crawled out and you crawled from. Calm yourself, I, I just had some questions. Man's face turns blood red and begins shouting, Are you daft? With a snow with a snarl, he spits at your feet. You filthy scar ridden dog. Off with ye, or even the powers won't be able to save your hide. Alright, bye. Sheesh. Can we maybe talk to his wife to find out how we can get him to calm the fuck down? This woman looks to be in her middle years, and her hair has streaks of gray running through it. Lines of worry crisscross her face. As she, as she sees you, she seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Hi? You'd best leave for a call me husband. He won't take kindly to you having barged your way into our house. Calm down, I, I just had some questions. She glances towards her husband, worry in her eyes. I... I have not the time, stranger. Don't be troubling with me with such things. Are you alright? What's wrong? Me? She seems surprised. Oh, I, I. She lowers her voice. You'd best leave. My husband's not been himself as of late. You'd best not provoke him in with your presence. I spoke with him and he seems troubled. What's wrong with him? He's been out of sorts of late. A touch of a cough, maybe. She gives a kind of convincing half shrug. What's really wrong with him? I think... I think he's done something he regrets. Her worried expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to do such a foolish thing. I heard something about that in the mortuary. What's that? The dead... the dustmen... have contracts that give them the right to send to someone's body after they die. What do the dustmen do with their body after death? Animate it with their black magics. Turn it into one of the walking dead. Make it work her until... She looks at her husband helplessly. Until it rots away. Why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been a... He may have been goat eater to bring some... To bring some more Jenkins in than custom. He's prideful. But I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Can this contract be undone? She looks at you, surprised, then sighs. 
I've tried. I've spoken to the dustman, and he did the sign-in with, but he's cold and chill, like the den, like all the dusties. He even lectured me on, he ever lectured me on me husband, as if I had no right to ask to try and help him. Her lips become tight, a tight thin line, as if picturing the dustman's face. He was, he was cold, cruel he was. Let's see, well, let me see what I can do. Who was this dustman that your that you, your husband signed the contract with? The dusty calls himself Gravesend. I know not his first name. He has a table at the dustman bar in the hive. Gather in dust, I believe the place is called. He can most like find him there, trying to get more people to get and sign his contracts. Updated my journal. All right, I'll see what I can do. I won't turn away from such a friendly gesture. See, she seems grateful, and then worried about her, and then her worried expression returns. But I must ask you to not let and let to let on. I asked you to do such a thing. The husband has a terrible temper. If we were to find out, I promise. Thank you, stranger. I appreciate your help. All right, let's see what I can do. How do I leave? Where's the door? Where's the there's a door. Alright, let's go find us a scummy dusty. Okay, you're not Gravesend. You're not Gravesend. You're not Gravesend. You are definitely not Gravesend. You're not Gravesend. More tiger raves end. Hi, you scummy bastard. This tiny wizened man is dwarfed by his huge dustman robes. They look as if they were chosen to cloak his small stature. Although he looks to be in his late nineties, the man is extremely energetic. He fidgets, he fidgets continuously, and his eyes dart around the bar like a bird's. Hi. Oh, shoot. Sure. Okay, uh, the man's eyes gleam as he takes your measure and he gives a slight nod in greeting. Hail and well met, traveler. You look like one who's just getting their sickle legs about then, about them. He trails off. Pardon me, have we met before? Your face seems familiar somehow. Uh, no, at least I don't recall you. Hmm, maybe I was mistaken. Mordai shakes his head. Well, no matter, no matter. How is it that may, that Mortai Gravesend may help you? Do you seek... He clicks his tongue as he speaks. The contract, perhaps? Mortai Gravesend. Are you the dustman who signed the contract with Angyar? Mortai frowns. He looks puzzled. Mayha? He thinks for a moment. I don't recall that name, however. I would like to settle that contract. Mortai looks wary. I'm afraid that's not possible. The contract is signed, settled, and binding. Let's see. The contract is tearing the man's life apart. Mortai shakes his head. That is indeed unfortunate, but it is now a matter of law, no matter of the heart. Is there any way I might be able to settle the contract with you? Updated my journal. Let's see, it's a matter of when it is a matter of law, not a matter of decision. Threaten time? Mortai freezes, his eyes gauging you. If you draw weapons here, you will not live to use them. There are guardians that you cannot even see hovering about this place, and even if you leave, the dustman shall see to it that you are punished. Do not make such a foolish threat, and do not make such foolish threats in my presence. Uh, last I checked, I don't want to piss off the Dusties. Just, is there anything, anything I can do? Uh, wait, huh? Mortai turns as you face as you leave. Hmm, he has a strange expression on his face. What? 
Forgive me, I must ask again. Are you sure we haven't messed before? I mean, I don't recall you, so... Ugh. <sighs> Shit. So... Mm, what do we do then? Okay, I got some new dialogue message and messages about uh asking if I could just see the contract. So let's see where we can get and let's see how we can how we can possibly get this guy to hand it over. Mortai frowns and looks into the folds of his robes. I do not normally keep such documents with me, but it may, but it may be that Mortai pulls forth a sheaf of papers within his robe and robes and begins leafing through the documents. No, I do not have it on me. Would you like me to fetch it from one of our back rooms? Uh, I would like to see it. Updated my journal. After a while, Mortai returns from them with a dusty piece of parchment in his hands. He holds it up, allowing you to see it, but he does not allow you to allow it to leave his grip. Let's see. It all looks in order. Uh, I'd like to settle it. Um, taking the man's life apart. Is there any way I can settle it? But the contract is tearing his life apart. Uh. So, mm. I don't want to sign it, but mm. uh. shit, there is nothing we can do to help out Angyar, so we can't really we can't really get anything done because basically my friend told me that Angar is the guy who can help us uh, get to that and activate that portal and uh, I need some help guys I'm gonna cut the episode off here but uh, if you guys have any help that you can uh, provide just please let me know Anyway, hopefully we'll be able to get that done next time on Let's Play Planescape Torment. I will see you guys then, and take care.